Thank you, Ida. And welcome to the Resting Community Orchestra's annual tribute to Reverend Dr. Luther King, Jr. It's so glad to see all of you in a sold out house. <laughs> My name is Dave Tiller. I'm the president of the Resting Community Orchestra. And we have an exciting program for you today. Well, with many of Reston's own solos. So, uh, obviously, well, uh, Lila mentioned Dingwall and the moment of silence that I have prepared as well. So, we're all feeling this, and we all want to make sure that um, the rest of the community orchestra lives on and we uh, cherish the things that he's helped us do for the last 28 years. So, without any further ado, I'd like to invite Barbara to Clark. So join us and lead us in the national anthem. Please stand. <laughs>
34 years, longest relationship I've had with anyone not related to me. I can't tell you the number of ways in which you served as a mentor, a guide, a teacher, and inspiration. You've noticed I'm accredited with several arrangements. He encouraged me to do that. That was all his idea. I don't know where he is now. It's two weeks since he's been gone. It seems like a month. I don't know where he is now, but I'm sure he'd be proud that he could see us now. I'd like to thank my colleagues for coming. Thank you. Now, please welcome our next guest soloist, Mr. Larry Kay. Oh, 
in your program and all the advertising we put out that we had planned to play some compositions by Dr. Gilbert Pryor. Well, Dr. Gilbert Pryor had a prior arrangement tonight. You see, he's a very popular group, and they're playing some uh, skates in another place. And uh, we are still going to play the piece that was commissioned by Big Wall for the Martin Luther King celebration last year, which of course was canceled because of COVID. We did play this piece in May, if you were here in May, with the New World Order Forums, but again, they're uh, making money tonight. So uh, we have three musicians from within the orchestra, which we like to do very often. Isaac Roberts on trumpet, David Breeskin on tenor saxophone, and Bill Miller on trombone. So uh, please welcome uh, our guest soloists from within the orchestra. This is March of Freedom and uh, in commemoration of the struggles for social change by Dr. Gilbert Platt.
composition with something we like to do here. So again, if you come back in March, we have a new composition that I just heard for the first time today by Colin Sarabian, our bass player. So come on back. Always doing something new. So now I'd like to invite the students from Al Fatih Academy here in Weston to uh, come and uh, join us in reciting the Dr. Lark, Martin Luther King, I Have a Dream speech and their own dream. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American, in whose symbolic shadow we stand today, signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope for million, millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But, one hundred years later, the Negro is still languished in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. And so we've come here today to cash a check, a check that will give us upon the demand, upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. We have also come to this hallowed spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. This is not the time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time to make justice a reality for all of God's children. The marvelous new militancy, which has engulfed the Negro community, must not lead us to a distress of all white people. For many of our white brothers, as evidenced by their presence here today, have come to realize that their destiny is tied up with our destiny. And they have come to realize that their freedom is inextricably bond with our freedom. We cannot walk alone. There are those who are asking the devotees of civil rights, when will you be satisfied? We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro is the victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We can never be satisfied as long as our bodies, heavy with the fatigue of travel, cannot gain lodging in the motels of the highways and the hotels of the cities. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro's basic mobility is from a small drug, get go to a larger one. We can never be satisfied as long as our children are stripped of their selfhood and robbed of their dignity by our stuffing stating for whites only. We cannot be satisfied as long as a Negro in Mississippi cannot vote, and a Negro in New York believes he has nothing for which to vote. No, no, we are not satisfied, and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. I am not unmindful that some of you have come here out of great trials and tribulations. Some of you have come from fresh, fresh from narrow jail cells, and some of you have come from areas where you quest. Quest for freedom left you battered by the storms of persecution, and staggered by the winds of police brutality. You have been the veterans of creative suffering. Continue to work with the faith that the unearned suffering is redemptive. Go back to Mississippi. Go back to Alabama. Go back to South Carolina. Go back to Georgia. Go back to Louisiana. Go back to the slums and ghettos of our northern cities knowing somehow the situation can and will be changed. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair as they do today, my friends. And so, even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It's a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up to the, and live up to the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the Red Hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. 
I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day, down in Alabama with its vicious racist, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, one day, right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day, every valley shall be exalted, and every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. Sweet land of liberty, land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, then this must become true. And so let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain, Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and every molehill of Mississippi. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And when this happens, and when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual. I have a dream that one day our people will, will stop climate change. I have a dream that one day our people will treat the poor and less fortunate with dignity and respect. I have a dream that one day free health care will be accessible to all. I have a dream that one day poverty will end. I have a dream that one day justice will be served for all. I have a dream that one day women will have equal rights like men. I have a dream that one day there will no longer be any more racial prejudice. I have a dream that one day there will be world peace. I have a dream that one day world hunger will no longer exist. I have a dream that one day all children will have access to quality education. I have a dream that one day every student can attend school without the fear of gun violence.
Please welcome once again Mr. Larry King. Something for you to think about on your way home. 
what are you going to do with your lives that will merit 450 people coming to the celebration of it? Something to think about. As the rain 
Thank uh-huh. 